Have you ever wanted to hire coaches that work for you? Today, I'm going to talk about bringing on coaches into your program, training them the correct way, and scaling out your program with either one-on-one -on -one training or group training. Now, I'm going to be very clear with you. There are some coaches that I work with at this point in my career that have you know, 10 to 15, upwards to 20 coaches that work for them, right? And they have these really big businesses. It is a, at that point, the business is a lot more complex. There's a lot more moving pieces. But today I want to share some, some basic things with you that you may or may not be thinking of when you hire people. And I think this is going to tie in perfectly to to the middle and the end of this episode where I talk about scaling the business. And this can be done with one-on-one -on -one training or with group training. It can be done with either. All right. Now, let's first talk about hiring. Now, the biggest mistake I see coaches make, and I want to start with this because this is very common. It's coaches hiring people without really knowing who they are. And there's no interview process. There's just, hey, like, I don't have time to, to train these these new kids anymore, so let me bring someone on. And it's a very rushed thing. And most coaches bring on bad people. All right, I'm not going to even say bad coaches. They're bringing on bad people. And this may have, I don't know, I don't know if this has already happened to you or not, but if you have brought on a bad person, I can tell you I've made that mistake in the past. And the only person's fault that was, it was mine. And that was a problem I had in my business uh, earlier on when I started bringing on people is I was just rushing. I was bringing on people that weren't qualified, didn't go through a process, and I did it because I saw the opportunity versus actually vetting them, All right? So if you want to bring on the right type of person, you have to vet them. You have to put them through a process. And at this point, the process that we teach coaches it is very strenuous. It is hard to work for these coaches. And there is a qualification process that these coaches have in place that protects themselves. All right. And I'll briefly explain what this is. So when these coaches that I work with, when they bring on coaches uh, that are like doing private training or group training or they're helping with camps or clinics, the process that we put them through is, is very straightforward. So first they create their expectations and standards for their company. And the reason why I have coaches do this first, it's because most people don't do this. They don't take a step back and say, what is our business about? Who are the types of people that will work for us? What are the standards that we set with the clients and coaches that work for us? And when you do that, then what it does is it, it automatically makes you more picky with who you bring on and it, because you start to focus on the values of your company. So that is the first step is I always have coaches create a document and that document is so clear about the type of person they want to bring on. That's number one. The second thing, it, and this is, this would be important for any job. It is to clearly define what the role is, right? Most of the time when coaches bring on assistants, they are bringing on someone and they're trying to give them too many different things to do or they don't give them proper direction on the task that they need to execute. So there's either too many different things going on or they just have them do something and they, they don't show them how to do it, right? So what you need is you need to have a clear role defined. So when this person comes into your company, they know exactly what to do. And they know what they're doing, all right? And behind that, it, there should be some sort of coaching and training for that person. So this way, it's really hard for them to fail, all right? So for example, there's a coach that I work with, and, and there's many coaches that I've worked with where we've set this up. Um, and again, I got nothing to hide here. So uh, 
and I'll just put you through his process. His process is set up to where if you're going to work for him, first you have an interview. So he has a like 20 minute interview where he asks his own specific questions that pair up with his uh, standards that he's set for his company. And odds are the most people who do that first interview don't get to the second stage because what he's looking for is he's looking for someone who's really good. He's looking for a really good human being. He's looking for someone who is more of a self-starter. He's looking for someone who really buys into his company. He's not looking for someone who can just do the job because if, if he brings on someone who can just do the job, well, that's not going to add any value to his business. And he's only wanting to bring on people who add value to his company, not just are there, all right? Because you got to remember, if it's and if a assistant coach is going to work with these kids, if the kid has a bad experience, they're going to go tell their parents. The parents are just going to cancel the program, and then now you're losing customers. And I've seen a lot of coaches' businesses get ripped up because of bad assistants that they bring on. All right. So again, his first step, it's like, yeah, you're going to go to uh, step two, or nope, see you later. All right. And his step two. He has it set up. It's a shadowing program. So this person will come and shadow for a month. They won't get paid during that month. They have to do certain things. I'm not going to go into detail about what he has them do during this time, but there's like a 30-day process where they shadow. And during that time, the owner, the guy that I work with, he puts out a few tests for this person to really see how reliable they are, really see how responsible they are. And if they get past step two, then they go to step three. And step three is the educational side. So this is why, again, this coach retains assistant coaches very well because he has this piece set up. And most coaches would never think of this. And this is what it is. He has the coach become certified. And the business owner, the, the guy that I deal with, what he did is he created videos inside of a, a course that a coach, you know, his assistant coaches have to go through. So they learn all of his standards. They learn all of his expectations. And the next step beyond that is they have to take a test to be certified. So they watch the videos, then they go through a test to be certified. And if they fail that test, they don't get the job. If they pass that test, all right, then they go to the next step, all right? And that next step, it is being more involved, like creating sessions. Like and, and at this point, it's almost like we're, we're letting them do more. And if they prove beyond that point that they are a great fit, because like someone is only going to be a good fit if they get there. Because if, if someone lazy takes the test, they're going to fail. They're not going to watch the videos all the way through and they won't get certified. And no one can work for him unless they're certified. All right. And he knows that if someone's serious enough, they will go through all of that. They will go shadow him for you know his business for 30 days. They will get to know some of the kids. They're going to invest their time into it because they will want the job, right? And you can see though, he makes it difficult for people. And why does he do this? He does that to protect his company because he's enrolling kids all the time in his business. The last thing he wants to do is enroll new kids and new families into his program. And then these parents are, are unhappy and these kids are unhappy with the product that he has. Instead, the coaches are great. They meet his standards. They meet his expectations because they've gone through this process, right? And I want you to notice how detailed that is, though, right? And I will tell you, if you don't have things set up to where it is challenging for someone to work for you, then you're going to bring on the bad, uh, you're going to bring on a bad person, right? I can promise you, you will run into someone who does like who has no standards because you didn't show them your standards and this is why it's so important if you have things set up with great detail you protect yourself and again I, th this is sounds very small but like if one client leaves because of a bad coach 
that's that's worth you know for this guy that's worth around two or three thousand dollars per year right because of a that's because of a management problem at that point because he brought on someone bad now the guys he brings on and the girls he brings on are very quality they're very dependable they're not texting him last second hey i can't go to the session today this stuff never happens to him all right now there are coaches that i've worked with who've taken this model that i'm showing you and they make it a paid certification where if someone wants to work for them they have to pay a couple hundred dollars to be certified and if they fail the test that that money is non-refundable <laughs> right now think about it think about it in this scope if someone has to pay to be certified they're going to take it even more serious all right and what we're doing here though is we're protecting these business owners so they only bring on good people at this point all right now that is what we do so like i work with a couple of coaches throughout the year one-on-one -on -one with scaling their company and that's a key component is i'm i'm showing them how to be a better leader i'm showing them how to manage these coaches i'm showing them how to pay them more i'm showing them how to streamline things like i don't do this sort of stuff with coaches in our group coaching program unless they ask me but like most coaches that I work with one-on-one, -on -one, this is what I specialize in at this point. It is the operations. It is the it is the nitty-gritty stuff that no one likes to think about, no one likes to talk about, but those are the biggest details that move the business forward in the future. And that leads me to what I'm about to show you here, okay? So if you have the right person in place, you can, you can infinitely scale your training business if they're the right person if you have the wrong person you're not going to grow your business like it's it is going to hold you back and actually it's going to hurt it's better to not have someone that helps you like it's better just to do this by yourself unless you bring on the right type of person right because if you bring on the wrong type of person it's going to cause more stress bringing on coaches into your business it brings on way more stress to someone than they can imagine and I'm just being honest with you, like, and if they're the wrong person, that's going to bring on horrible stress. If it's the right person, that stress will be very manageable because they'll know what to do. They know when to show up. They know what to wear. They know how to talk to kids. They know all of your standards. And if you get that, then you should be very protective with your business in the future. If you don't get that, then you'll just keep hiring people that are a bad fit and, and you'll blame it on them and that's the thing you can't blame an assistant that you bring on who's running sessions you can't blame them for anything any problem that they run into any problem that they bring in your life is that is your fault because you did not educate them and you not show them what you want them to do and i know that's blunt but that's how it is it's your fault it's your business all right when there's a problem at amazon all right it goes all the way to Jeff Bezos. Like, like, and of course, he has team members in place that educate his workers on exactly what to do. So, like, again, he's going to take the, the blame for everything, though. If something crazy happens, his name's going to be in the headlines. All right, same thing with your business. Something crazy happens, it's going to be your name in the headlines. So bring on quality people. So that should be background check. That should be having them go through a process. That should be them showing a lot of responsibility before they even get the job. That should be them really buying into your company. And if they're not, this is going to be a very short-term type of hire for you because they're just going to go find a better opportunity that pays them more, that uh, you know that they might enjoy more because they have a better boss, right? And kids, that again, you're a boss. You're the boss in this situation, okay? And again, if you have the right type of person, everything I'm about to say is going to make sense. All right. So I'm going to stop talking about the bad person that you bring on. I'm going to fo focusing, honing in on if you have a process in place and you pr are protecting yourself. Now we're going to get to the good stuff. Okay. So I want you to write this down because like this is only really going to make sense if you follow the numbers here. So if you bring someone on, one person 
if you can have them run anywhere between 10 to 15 sessions per week. This could be for one-on-one -on -one training or for group training. All right, that is going to help you save between 40 and in this scenario, 60 hours per month where you are no longer fulfilling those sessions. Now, it it might be hard to, to imagine, wow, like I'm gonna save so much time per month. It's hard to think think about that unless you take a step back and you actually do the numbers. And because again, if they're doing 10 sessions a week where you are not there, you are not having to watch what they're doing, like you have them go through a process. Again, this is the right type of guy that's working for you, the right type of girl that's working for you. Then now those 10 hours are not 10 hours that you are putting in. The The hours that you are putting in are the, it is the time of managing this person, making sure they're doing a great job. And when you do that, now you just freed up 10 hours per week, which is 40 hours per month. And if it's 15 hours per week, then it's 60 hours per month. That's with one person, all right? So imagine having, all right, I'm just gonna use this example. Let's, let's say you have a $400 per month one-on-one -on -one training program, okay? So if we take 400 times 10 sessions, or sorry, 10 clients, that's $4,000 of income that coming into the business without you physically having to work. Again, you are managing and coaching this person, the guy or the girl who's working for you, but they're bringing in 4K per month into the business. Now, at that point, it's up to you to decide, well, how much do I want to pay this person per hour? Okay. And I'm not going to be the one who says, here's how much you should pay. All right. I'm not going to tell you that. Um, I will, because that can vary in different markets. But if you're running on, let's just say you're running on, because you should be able to, running on like a 60 to 70% margin here, then you're going to make somewhere, you know, profit out of that $4,000. You're going to make somewhere between, you know, 2000 and up, two, maybe two to $3,000 of income that's coming into the business without you physically working. And then the rest goes to the coach. And again, you want to pay them hourly. And I, I'm not going to go into the details of how to like pay them and manage all that. Like there, there's so many little things that go into that, that I won't, I just won't have time. Um, but with that, right, 4,000 into the business, and let's say 1,000 to 1,500 out, that is going back to the coach that fulfilled the session. So if you can do around $2,500, then we take $2,500 per month, all right, times 12, all right, right there, you just add an extra $30,000 of income into your business, all right, without you doing the hours of training, okay? I, I want you to pay close attention to that, $30,000. Now, for some people listening, they might be like, well, I, I just don't think that'll be worth it. Some people might, you might be thinking, well, wow, that's crazy. Like I could make an extra $30,000 in my company without having to do the actual sessions. And it's, yes, it's true. That's with one-on-one -on -one training, right? Now, imagine having, and, and again, this is this is real stuff. Like I, I, I am not sugarcoating anything. Imagine having five to 10 guys that work for you that have 10 clients each. So let's just take five. So let's take 50, for example. So so if there's five coaches and there's 50 clients, all right? That means each coach is going to have 10 clients. They're all running 10 sessions per week, all right? So we take 50 times 400. That's $20,000 of income coming in per month, all right? And that could be, this is for private training, okay? One-on-one -on -one training here. That's $20,000 per month coming into the business, times 12, that's $240,000 per year. So that's a that's more than a quarter of a, I mean, that's a, about a quarter of a million dollars per year of income that's coming in. Obviously, like if you're running 60 to 70% margins, right? You get take 240 minus whatever, uh, whatever you're paying your coaches and that's what's left over that's coming in the business. Now, there's a lot of coaches that I work with that at this point, that do this sort of stuff, 
All right, that's with one-on-one -on -one training. Now, I will tell you, I'm just going to be very honest <laughs> and upfront. It is good to have this set up in your business if you have the manpower. Now, it's better to have one-on-one -on -one training, like a higher-end version of it, maybe $400 to $500, and then also have a group training version where, uh, or a group training setup so you can have one coach service like 10 kids at once or six to eight kids at once or even four kids at once. That, that, model, that model comes back to your standards that you set. And again, this is why like a lot of coaches make mistakes just doing group training and not really having standards and, and not knowing the size of their groups and, and how to make that really efficient. So let's just, I'm going to use the example of 10. All right. So let's say there's 10 kids in one group. All right. And let's say that group, let's say it's $150 per month. All right. This in my mind is low. You could charge more than this, but let's say it's 150. So we take 150 times 10 kids. That's fifteen hundred dollars of revenue coming in. Now, if you have one coach that services that group every week, all right, we take fifteen hundred times twelve months. That's eighteen thousand dollars of income for one group of ten if they're committed to an annual program, which is what we teach. All right. Now, now you take eighteen grand minus how much you're paying the coach that's working for you. So. The business is going to generate more income with group training. But if you have the manpower, it's good to have one-on-one -on -one training and group training. And this is what I'm seeing. Coaches that have both of these things set up and they have coaches that can fulfill both services, they will end up doing a lot better in their business than just offering one. All right, Because now they have multiple options that parents can choose from. And that is how you can grow your business if you have the right manpower. All right. And when I, when I work with coaches at this point, one-on-one, -on -one, if they're only offering one-on-one -on -one training, I come in and I help them set up group training. If they're only doing group training, then I look to help them maximize what they're doing in their groups. And typically that's cutting hours and, and maximizing each session. Uh, you know, this might sound bad, but it's sometimes when I come in to help coaches, like one of the first things we do is we, we fire the bad people. Like within a couple of days, we get rid of the, the cancer in the business, which is typically the bad people, uh, we start cutting hours and we start maximizing time. So they're probably spending way less money in rent. Uh, and I look at all of the numbers across the board. I look at that very closely. And then though, we maximize group training and then we add in one-on-one -on -one training as a higher level service with the right manpower. Right. And this is why some of the coaches that I work with, they can get their business to like on my website, it says like grow to 10 to, to 50 K per month. Like there are many coaches that I've worked with at this point that can generate 50 K or more per month. Right. They're doing that though with manpower. They're not doing that by just by themselves. There are some coaches that can, they can get to 20 or 30 K per month by themselves. But they'll always get to a certain point where they're going to get burned out. They're doing too much. Um, and they need to bring on other people to fulfill the sessions. And again, a lot of coaches always tell me, well, I just don't can't trust anyone or no one can do it the way I can do it. Well, this comes down to teaching. You can teach someone to do it the way that you do it. All right. You can teach the right person to do it the way you can do it. And it's good to, to know if, when you remove your ego in this business, your, your business goes a lot further. It really does. Okay. And this is why I recommend in the future, if you don't have one-on-one -on -one training set up and you have coaches that work for you, I would install that as a high level, uh, high level service that is more expensive than everything else. And here's why parents are wanting one-on-one -on -one personalized attention. And you know, I'm just gonna be blunt parents that are wealthy, are willing to invest between $400 and $1,000 per month in one-on-one -on -one training. I know this. I know this firsthand. I see it every day with coaches that I work with. All right? And most parents are willing to invest between $200 to $300 for group training. All right? So you can do the numbers on your end, and, and you can scale it out and be like, man, if I had five coaches that were doing group training... 
all right, let's, you know, let's, let's take 10 kids per group, all right? And, you know, we had five coaches doing that, and each coach has their own group. Or one coach has five groups, all right? It doesn't really matter. You can see the amount of income that can come in with that model that I showed you where it's 150 per month, so it's $1,500 per group, all right? You, you can bring in, you know, close to six figures per year by relying on someone who can run the sessions. Now, you might be listening to this being, and, and think like, well, there's no way I could bring someone on and, and, I don't know, training someone and doing all that. It's going to take so long, and I just don't want to do that. Well, then that might not be for you, all right? You, you might be better off just doing it by yourself, and that's cool, all right? And... Maybe you've had a bad experience bringing a coach on and you, they ripped you off and they tried to duplicate what you've done. That happened to me, all right? That happened to me in 2013. I brought on a bad person. Actually, I brought on a couple bad dudes. Whose fault was that? It wasn't their fault. That was my fault. I was, I, I was a bad manager of people during that time. I, I was, did not do a good job of, of finding top talent. Right, knowing what I know now, like it is so incredibly difficult to work with me at this point. <laughs> like, and and I get this. Like, co coaches reach out to me all the time, ask me, "Hey Ben, can I work for you? Can I help you grow your company?" Well, are you going to go through all these tests? Are you going to pay to be certified? All right, because I, I practice what I preach. Like, if someone's going to come work for me, they're going to have to go through this super long, strenuous process. And that way I know when they, when they're doing their job, I'm not thinking, man, are they slacking off right now? Are they just goofing around or are they doing exactly what I told them to, to do because they know, understand my expectations. All right. So I hope this episode helps. And again, if you're looking to grow your business and, and bring on the right type of people, like I have a couple of of spots open right now for one-on-one -on -one coaching now my one-on-one -on -one coaching program now is very very different than what i've offered in the past in the past it's like a 12-month program uh i meet with coaches typically once once a week or once every other week um and i'm not offering that anymore because like i have a set amount of coaches that i've been working with over the past four years and and i'm only working with them at this point my new one-on-one -on -one coaching program is very different it is not a long-term type of commitment. I typically do it for either four weeks or eight weeks. And I come in and solve a very specific problem with you. And uh, I'm not going to go into detail of exactly, exactly what that is here on this episode. I would need to chat with you and see if you have that problem. And if you don't, then I probably won't work with you. And if you do, then working with me would be an awesome investment because you get a huge return. All right. That's it for today's episode. I hope this helps. And uh, again, if you're going to bring someone on, make sure they are a good human being. It's not just some coach that you find off the corner of the street. They are a good human being. That will protect your business for the future. Thanks so much. See you later.